Hello and welcome to another mock showcase video. For those of you who are craving a little more variety, I'm happy to say that after this video I will have covered every steam engine I have made, at least for the foreseeable future. These two designs are the most powerful passenger engines ever built by their respective companies, these being the LNER and the Great Western Railway. I'll start with the King. This is the name given to the Great Western's largest class of passenger engines, built to haul longer and heavier trains over tricky terrain. This particular model is based on the engine King Edward II, which has just recently been restored to working order. While a lot of the build was quite standard, there were some tricky techniques needed to pull this one off. Due to the limited parts available in dark blue, the shape of the cab was only made possible by a very complicated building technique. And then there's this curved smoke pipe. I tried to use flex tube, but the plastic would cave inwards instead of bend, and rubber tubes just kept springing back into place. In the end, the answer came in the form of a knockoff minifigure. It had a six long staff made from softer plastic, and it was able to bend much easier. So with a bit of hot water, I was able to get the right shape. The only downside is that I had to shell out four pounds for a second one. The big reason for choosing to make this engine was the livery. Edward II is one of the very few engines that can be seen sporting British Railways blue, and it looks fantastic. If possible, I might find some gold trimline tape to highlight the wheel arches and window frames, but for now, I'm happy with the model and it runs extremely well. Now let's move on to one of the most unique engines I've ever made. The LNER P2s were quite possibly the strongest passenger engines in the country, and were built to haul heavy trains along the difficult main line between Edinburgh, Aberdeen and Inverness in Scotland. The eight driving wheels on this build meant it was a challenge to get around corners, but after a lot of trial and error it's now relatively smooth. Ironically, its pulling power is the lowest of all my engines because it's the heaviest build, so the motor has to deal with the larger weight. It's not so much of a problem now though, because of the motorised carriage. You'll notice that I've tried to give the engine at least some form of piston rod movement. It looks fine at low speeds, but once the pace picks up, this happens. While I'm very happy with the way this model looks, there is still one major flaw that I need to fix. The front pair of wheels are very delicately attached. On any track that isn't dead smooth, they often tend to jump the rails and cause a crash. It shouldn't be too tricky to fix, I just don't want to resort to using the craggle. Now a quick bit of trivia about the P2s. While all members of the class were scrapped by the 60s, they are due to make a comeback in the next few years, with two brand new engines under construction. The most prevalent is being made by the organisation responsible for Tornado, and will be called Prince of Wales. I'll put a link to their website in the description. Now it's almost the end of the showcase, but as always, please enjoy some footage of the engines at work.
As always, be sure to follow my Flickr page for regular updates and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care.